Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. That's my email. It's in the description below. Email me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com for the pricing of this watch. Today, we're discussing a spectacular 2023 model year, limited edition of 10 pieces in blue-gray tantalum. This is the H. Moser & C. Endeavor Perpetual Tantalum. This is a USA limited edition of 10 with a jade dial so do i have your attention i hope i do i'm already in love will you follow me over the edge this is a 42 millimeter tantalum case that's the diameter 13.5 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip 48.5 millimeters that's the distance across the wrist it has a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs now this watch fits nicely for two reasons first it's relatively short lug to lug for its size. Normally when you have a 42 millimeter watch, it's gonna be 50 millimeters across or more. This being 48.5 and having sharply downturned lugs and having a curved and cambered case back, it sits securely on a smaller wrist like mine. My wrist is 16 centimeters and you can see that the watch sits naturally securely and I will also advise comfortably. You definitely feel the weight. Tantalum on the wrist feels a lot like gold. It's heavy, it declares itself, and eyes closed, you would swear it's a precious metal. There's your down the barrel shot, plenty of clearance on each side. Here's your over the top, plenty of clearance on each side. It's not a thin watch, but it has a dramatically sloped concave bezel that does help a dress cuff to ramp up and over. The strap is kudu, an unusual and rustic leather that Moser often uses for the top side of its straps. Black, matte, you can see that there's a sheer cut side, a monotone stitch, and then conventional calfskin and black on the bottom. It's a brand new Moser factory strap, no crimping, no gouging. We have a matching Moser stainless steel pin buckle, and we'll talk about why that is in a second. But the buckle features a combination of satin and polish for contrast, and then the arcing curve of the buckle profile actually matches the arcing curve of the Moser lug profile. This watch is a very subtle two-tone. Blink and you'll miss it, but you'll see that the crown and the case back are a much whiter metal than the rest of the watch. And so the watch is a very subtle type of two-tone and a beautiful one. The case is hand-finished. Now, Moser worked with its case supplier for two years to be able to produce something repeatably that was of saleable quality as a luxury product. And tantalum is infuriating. Edward Milan, the CEO of Moser, told me that not only did it take two years, but in the end they had to resign themselves to basically wearing out one set of tooling per case produced. That's how tough it was. Now you see, it's finished and shaped just like any other Moser Endeavor case. You have a lovely concave bezel that's concave all the way around, but note how it expands and flows at 12 and six. We have satin finish in the mid case, as with other Endeavors, and these beautiful sculpted concave lug hollows. Moser achieves this by first machining, then hand finishing its cases. This isn't something you can do with mass produced machining or stamping by itself. So the methods used to make cases at other brands could not reproduce this effect. And again, there is that wonderful curvature or camber to the case back and the case back sapphire. There's a little pusher adjuster on the flank because Andreas Streller, who designed this perpetual calendar system for Moser, he's an independent watchmaking master who focuses on cloaking the complexity of complications. So make a perpetual calendar that's very simple. Here you have a stub index at the center of the dial, 12 hours corresponding to 12 months of the year. So what you're looking at right here is a two and a 26, so that's February 26. That's how you read the calendar. But you do need a leap year phase indicator. So he hit it on the back because you don't need to reference it often. And then there's a little adjuster so you can cycle the leap year phase indicator. The dial, oh, the dial inside a case that looks as though it were made of molten metal drawn out forcibly and then flash frozen in its fluid form. We have this lovely marbled green jade dial. Now Moser didn't want to go with a bright green jade dial, both because other brands have done that kind of jade and also because green dials on the whole have become a bit of a cliche over the last two years. So they wanted a different kind of jade green that would stand the test of time. Hence this marbling of white and green and no two of the 10 piece edition we have here will be exactly 
exactly the same. Now, this USA edition has a special dial, and there's something special on the case back. That's what sets it apart from the regular production Abyss Blue Endeavor Perpetual Tantalum. So we'll talk about that when we get to the back side of the watch. Now, when Streller designed this perpetual calendar system, he wanted it to be really friendly. He wanted you to be able to set it in both directions and to have no date change danger zone where you could break the mechanism with the quick set. So you see how this works. I can turn it in either direction. And if you look really closely, you can see how he avoided making the watch huge. You can have an oversized date because there are two superimposed discs that bear different halves of the month. That's how he was able to get a huge date in the window without creating a huge dial for one big wheel. Now, the watch has a perpetual calendar, which means you don't have to touch it until the year 2100. And unlike other perpetual calendars that have to go back to the factory that year, this one can be manually corrected the day of well, 2100's leap year day. When you get to February of 2100, it will not be a leap year, a quirk of the Gregorian calendar. With this watch, you can just jump right past, not a problem. Other perpetual calendars have to go back to the factory. There is a hacking or stop seconds function, so you can set the watch to the second against a reference time. We have a power reserve indicator over at nine o'clock. Manual wind power reserve, nominally seven days. That's what Moser claims. In fact, it's more like about nine that is under-promising and over-delivering. And then you have that spectacular green jade dial with alpha-style hands for the power reserve in seconds, applique indices for 12 and 6, and then faceted leaf-style hands for the hours and minutes. You can see the Moser M on that crown, and probably this is the best angle where you can really see the difference between the color of the case and the color of the steel crown. Flip it all over. This is HMC 800, but it has two big changes from a standard HMC 800. Let's start with the one that's specific to this model. Get super close to the balance. Look at the capstone under the Inca block shock protection. That is a real brilliant cut diamond. The rubies used for the pivots, those are synthetic, but the diamond is real. You will not get that on the standard production version of the Tantalum Perpetual Calendar. This diamond capstone is only available on this 10-piece limited edition and its 10-piece counterpart with lapis style. So 20 pieces made for the U.S. market, 10 jade, 10 lapis, each with this diamond capstone. Now, what else makes this different from a standard HMC 800? Well, all versions of the Tantalum Perpetual Calendar get Moser's double hairspring. Two hairsprings, flat, identical, pinned, 180 degrees opposed. So, if I hold it with respect to gravity here, one of those hairsprings is going to slow the watch. The other, by an equal and opposite margin, remember, 180 degrees opposed, will speed it up. In any position, the two Equal and opposite errors cancel each other out, achieving instantly on a wristwatch in any position what a tourbillon regulator used to achieve in a pocket watch, which is evening out the effect of gravity on timekeeping. Now, it's a slow beat, 18,000 vibrations per hour, and you can see it's a sports watch architecture with a full balance bridge anchored on both sides and then free sprung hairsprings and a free sprung balance so that shock cannot move a mobile stud index and change the timing. Moser makes the balance the hairspring, even the 14 karat gold escapement in-house via its precision engineering subsidiary. And that means it can actually make the most challenging parts of a movement, the parts that many avowed movement manufacturers are not able to make. Now you may ask, why 14 karat gold escapement? Well, that's a mechanical grade of gold that's hard enough to be used in an escapement and it limits the amount of lubricant necessary, which improves the performance of the watch. You can also see there's a rose gold plate underneath the balance because the balance, the hairspring, the escapement, the whole thing lifts out as a unit to be replaced at your regional Moser service center. And yes, they do have regional service centers in all the major markets. They put in a pre-serviced, timed, lubricated, and adjusted platform assortment so that your watch can get back to you faster. That's the benefit of having this modular system. We also have a lovely number of nostalgic elements that hark back to the old Moser company from the 19th century and early 20th century. You can see the twin mainspring barrels are set in golden chiton and that the train wheels are also set in golden chiton because back in the day, the pocket watch era, it was difficult to press a jewel directly into a bridge or a plate. So precision golden cups would be made, the jewel set into the cup, and then the cup set into the bridges and plates and held by screws. These screws are black polished and mirrored. Moser has a three-quarter style architecture. You can see the bridges are split for easier servicing, but they read as a three-quarter, just like on a pocket watch. 
We have these double-crested Côte de Genève, which are unique to Moser. We have a handsome bevel, which you can see on the edge of the bridges. We also have satination on the wheels. We have satination on the click spring, which has a lovely swan's neck format, much like an old pocket watch. You can see it in action there. And then all this is 30 meters water resistant. Also worth mentioning, because of the twin barrels, we don't just get a long power reserve, we get an even torque release. So the watch doesn't gallop and gain time when fully wound, nor does it lose a huge amount of time after a couple of days of running. The phased torque curves of these twin mainsprings, even all of that out. So much to love, yet so few of these watches made. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.